Hey guys, Ed Bud here with the forthcoming release of the Nike Zoom Pegasus 38. Today I'm taking a brief look back at the use of Zoom technology throughout the ages. But I'll also be asking the question as to whether Nike's continued use of Zoom Air in the midsole of their running shoes is holding back the brand. Thanks for tuning in today guys. If you haven't done so already, please think about hitting that subscribe button and also clicking the bell below for notifications of when I launch those new videos. It also really helps the channel out if you give this video a thumbs up like. Finally warm enough to bring back the cap. Today we're taking a look back through history at the Nike Pegasus model. It's one I was really interested in when I was a kid. I remember having a few pairs of the early Pegasus shoes. I was really lucky to have a couple of pairs of those. A lot of my classmates at school were really keen to check them out. Later in the video, I will be asking the question as to whether Nike's continued use of Zoom Air in the midsoles of their shoes are kind of holding the brand back, really, from moving forward. Have some of the other competitors caught up with them? I have got a poll going on the community section of the YouTube channel, so do go and check that out and you can voice your opinions. So way back in 1983, was when Nike released this Pegasus shoe, the shoe for all runners. It was even used by some of the top marathon runners in the day during training. I do remember last year when Nike were marketing the Pegasus 37 and boy, did they do some good marketing. They did have a lady there that had used the Pegasus to actually run a competitive marathon. We still see pictures of Kipchoge and the gang utilizing the Pegasus, although more and more often we're seeing Kipchoge using the next percent to train it. When it launched, it was about $50, but if you convert that to pricing nowadays, it's about $133, so about 96 Earth credits here in the UK. At the time, Bowerman stated that if you have a body, you're an athlete. That's my motto, which I think is why perhaps this model has lasted so long. It's the shoe that's aimed at the everyday public rather than the elite runners. I mean, not everybody wants or needs an Alpha Fly or a Next Percent, do they? But we do all need a daily running shoe in our rotation. So weirdly, the first Pegasus only had an air unit in the heel of the shoe. Nike did a survey and they found that most runners strike with their heel. In fact, they said three out of four runners are heel strikers. So that does explain the higher stack in the heel wear of the shoe, allowing a bit more space for that airbag. I think the original air unit was about four inches in length and embedded into EVA. Nike said that they put one of the air units into another shoe that just had EVA and it increased the shock absorption by 12%. Imagine using that as a selling point now. There's 12% extra shock absorption. People would be like, uh, nah, nah, it's all right, I'll, uh, I'll pass on that one. Also interesting on the ad here is some info regarding air pressure. Apparently it was scaled dependent upon the size of the shoe. So that could explain a few things these days. Certain shoes seem to work really well in smaller sizes, yet others in the larger sizes just seem cumbersome and clunky and odd. They crunched a load of numbers, some data, you know, Nike always do that. And they suggest that an EVA midsole would lose between 15 to 20% of its cushion after about 300 miles. I mean, that doesn't appear to have changed an awful lot, does it, over the years? I mean, we're going back some years now, 38 years. One big worry, though, that Nike had when they tried to market the use of this air sole shoe, certainly to runners, was about durability. You can see here that they're being very cautious to explain to people that, don't worry, the shoe's durable, it's going to hold up. It's not going to pop or explode while you're running. Now, we all know that that has been happening with some of those AirPods on the Tempo Next Percent and the Alpha Fly Next Percent. They say here it's not going to pop, break, or leak, so they did encase it in foam for quite a long period of time. Some of the testing stats here are quite humorous. They reckon that after six million impacts, it was still good to go. You can see on the bottom of the 83 shoe here, we've got that waffle pattern. Now, we have seen that progressively change over the course of the years to the 37 model last year. We still got a kind of waffle pattern here on the sides. Quite a lot of exposed midsole actually in this heel section. It's not really what I'd call waffles though. That's what I call waffles, see. On the tailwind here. Let's not leave this one out. I mean, this has an air unit as well in the heel. I think this was the original model that kind of metamorphosized and progressively change into that Pegasus model. We're seeing Nike bring back 
that Bowerman style waffle outsole design with great success in fact with the Invincible run this year. They state the inclusion of this grip makes for better multi-surface traction. You can run on grass, asphalt, gravel or mud. And if you're just running daily stuff, well, that's what you want, isn't it? Something with versatility. There's a lot of shoes currently that are very much aimed at road running. And I think it's quite cool to have something that's quite versatile and can take on pretty much anything, which I did in fact find was one of the better features of the Pegasus 37 last year. I think the beauty of the Pegasus line has always been that simplicity, certainly in that 83 shoe. They minimize the overlays, no unnecessary tech, just what you need, only the necessary parts to make it tick. A tool of the trade and not hugely too expensive either. Sadly though, you see Nike moving away from that minimalist attitude. Perhaps it was the success of the Air Max that inspired them to include that visible air window in the heel. And as things progress, we see the shoes becoming more bulbous and oversized and some looks there that appear very dated already. I think it's interesting that just after the inclusion of that visible air unit, Nike in fact dumped the Pegasus for a couple of years and renamed it, only to bring it back again in 2000. I know there were loads of people complaining that it wasn't available anymore. In fact, some running shoe stores really took umbrage to the fact that Nike had stopped the model and kind of discontinued it. In 2005 though, once again, they're experimenting with the position of that air unit, this time with visible forefoot air. The 2007 model seemed obsessed with sort of silver computerized sort of high tech looks. Actually the silver shadow was doing that way before. Nike were just copying. But fortunately by 2011, we've gone back to a more timeless design in some more interesting colorways. Aside from a big change in terms of the upper materials, there's not a huge amount of difference between that model released in 83 and the one that's going to be released in 2021. It's Nike's desire to try and continually use some sort of air in the midsole of the Pegasus holding back the model. Over the last couple of years we've seen other shoe manufacturers really catch Nike up in terms of their midsole technologies. Midsole foams have improved, they've become lighter, they've become more resilient, become more cushioned. Energy return has gone through the roof. And other manufacturers have managed to create some shoes that are equal or if not better than Nike's models. It's almost like a given now, isn't it, that the Pegasus line is gonna have some type of zoom air. The four foot this time in the 37, in the 35, in the 36, it was a full length zoom unit. I mean, New Balance have been producing some superb shoes recently. Stuff that's on par easily with Nike's daily models. Puma, Reebok, all of them, they've all produced some great stuff. Look at the Nova Blast last year. Loads of runners picked that one up. They wouldn't have thought about picking up an ASIC shoe. New midsole foam, new feeling underfoot. Sketches, certainly in the US, seem to have much broader appeal now. People are looking for alternatives. Have Nike milked that cash cow just too much? You know, when I hear Zoom Air, I kind of think, Wonderwall. You know, I just hear the same thing over and over again. We've heard it many times. Yeah, it's a great track, but just heard it too many times now. It's too predictable, perhaps. You can change the midsole foam up, but still using the same tech. You can't get away from the fact that Nike's most highly adopted ratio is that Vaporfly Next Percent. No Zoom Air here, although they always put Zoom in the title. What does it mean? I don't think even Nike know. You see Zoom Air or Air Zoom, they seem to switch them around. It's just interchangeable. We have, of course, seen those Zoom Air units used to varying degrees of success within the Alphafly Next Percent and the Tempo Next Percent. Certainly a more limited take up of those shoes amongst runners that I know. The Pegasus Turbo, again, no Zoom Air there, and it proved really popular. In fact, I want another one, Nike. Come on, make us another one. Maybe Kev Burton can organize some type of petition. They shoehorn Zoom Air into the Vomero 15, but I don't really see too many people picking those up or even talking about them. Sockney have proved that a well-designed shoe series can really work and match Nike. Light and durable uppers there and new midsole construction. It can easily win over the hearts of runners. I mean, just look at the Endorphin Pro and the speed from last year. Reebok are putting Nike to shame, aren't they? Some of their shoes are like, half the price and you've seen other reviewers pick them up and like them just as much as me what's with the continued iteration of the same old tech in the midsole of the shoes i mean it was groundbreaking back in 83 wasn't it but now is it just a thing of the past upper midsole materials have changed a little bit yes but 
the configuration is the same. They just vary it up from time to time, forefoot, rear, or full length. So essentially the same configuration now for 38 years, at least at the time of making this video. Ultimately, the daily shoe category is probably the most competitive one. And I think if you don't nail it one year, then people will switch over to another brand or manufacturer and it's getting harder to actually pull people back again. Did I feel double the amount of energy in the Pegasus 37? No, not at all really. It felt interesting, but the upper ruined it for me. One question though that we can ask is, Will there be Zoom Air in the Pegasus 39 in 2022? Probably. Do go over to the poll on the community section of the site and let me know your views on this one, guys. A musical interlude for you. I stumbled across a really cool playlist on the Apple Music application. It actually features tracks produced by the famous Nigel Godrich. Now, I never realised he produced so many of the artists that I like. Tom York and Radiohead are on there, obviously, but also Pavement, Beck, and The Divine Comedy. Air as well, I really love Air. I just couldn't believe it, I didn't realize. It got me thinking about the great Tom York album, The Eraser. I've got a CD version of that, and I must have listened to it hundreds and hundreds of times. I love the production on it. It just sounds so organic, yet so electronic as well. Tom York's voice always has this great space to work in as well. A truly underrated vocalist, I think, Tom York. Capable of some beautiful range and real subtlety and sincerity in his voice. Do go and check this one out anyway, guys. It's an Apple playlist on the Apple Music application, all with songs produced by the famous Nigel Godrich. Okay, thanks for sticking with me to the very end of the video, guys. I do appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications when we launch those new videos for you. And it really helps the channel out in terms of the YouTube algorithm. If you give this video a thumbs up, like, and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.